Hey guys, Tammy Treyer, TreyerWilderness.com. I promised you a video last week on an interesting happening on our uh, last season's firewood haul. Uh, the brakes went out on the Mountain Boy's truck. However, he wasn't driving it, so that's a good thing. But before we get there, you can probably hear a hum in the background. I just wanted to point something out. Um, that's the air conditioner running. It's 94 degrees here. It's very warm. And I'm up in our loft. And uh, one of the things that we haven't gotten in is venting and a ceiling fan in our big room that would be pulling the hot air, pushing the hot air out of here. Uh, therefore, it gets really warm up here. So I start like feeling like my skin's melting off. So the very small little air conditioner in the window. And uh, I'm off grid. I got solar power. You can run an air conditioner. Now, mind you, I can't run that at night when I'm sleeping. But we have a fan in the window, and the nights are beautiful here. It gets nice and cool. Every once in a while, you get a pretty hot night, but it's not a big deal. So I just thought I'd put that out there. Um, also, one of the biggest things I want to point out in this video is to go with your gut instincts. That, in and of itself, is very huge. Many of us feel that feeling, and it's really funny that it does... Um, whoever coined that phrase uh, coined it well because typically you just get an unsettled feeling in, in, in your core when something's not right or something uh, could be coming ahead and uh, that day when we went to do firewood I felt that and the mountain boy is a new driver uh, so we were really concerned about him uh, driving up the mountain out here in northern Idaho, a lot of the roads that go up through the mountains are old logging roads. Um, they have no mercy. They're gravel. So if you stop too fast or go too fast, um, you slide and often right off the mountain. So that's not good. Um, additionally, uh, they're very narrow roads. Now, there was logging um, going on, but not the day we went up there. So that's huge because trying to pass a log truck on these narrow logging roads is scary, especially when they're moving at extreme clips because they get paid by the load. And typically, um, we're communicating with CBs so that, you know, we're announcing our location, they're announcing theirs. However, often they neglect to do that, so you come around a corner and you're smack face to face with a big truck and moving at a very fast clip. So it can be pretty nerving. And that's just part of the lifestyle out here, so you have to be prepared for it. As a matter of fact, my rig right now does not have a CB, and it makes me a little nerved when I'm even heading home because they're logging in our area again. And even the other day when we were calling out, many were not, and we passed five logging trucks heading up to get loaded. So they were empty, but even so. You know, like I said, these roads are narrow. They're, they're gravel. You hit gravel, you, you lock them up, and, you, you know, sometimes you don't know where you're going to go. So anyway, on the way up the mountain... I knew that my day would be spent up there writing, and I actually wrote uh, several chapters of my How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle up there that day and fine-tuned them because my health was still not good, and I knew that I, I couldn't overdo it. So I knew I'd be loading the truck, and I knew that would be uh, a good while till that was ready to go till they got the, the wood down, as you saw in last week's video. So on the way up there, when we got up there, um, there is cell service at the top of the mountain oftentimes because it, we were at the very top. So you can pick up a signal um, from the local towns, but under normal circumstances, um, we don't have cell service for a 30 mile radius. So it's just lucky that we can get it up there. If there is an emergency, we have an option to get out and you, know, you, start, you learn where those honey holes are and those spots are where you can pick up service. So it just so happened I had service up there, and I messaged my mother-in-law and just asked her to pray. I just told her I had this really weird, unsettling feeling regarding the day. I wasn't sure what it was, and when you're, you know, working with chainsaws and felling trees and hauling up the mountain and back down the mountain, you know, having a feeling like that is not good. Typically when we have a feeling like that, we don't do what we were intending to do. But being that I was the only one that had it, we proceeded. But I asked her to pray and told her why. And um, and he did great driving up the mountain. We uh, put him in between the two of us. So I was going first and he was in the middle and then uh, Glenn was behind him. 
and got up to the top of the mountain and and everything was fine went through the day everything was fine We're loading up the trucks and when I backed up his his rig uh, it was it was starting to have problems like something was clogging uh, maybe in the fuel filter it didn't want to stay running so you know I babied it and and I wasn't comfortable at all with him driving it down the mountain because if it went out uh, his brakes would be harder to handle his steering would be harder to handle and being an inexperienced driver I didn't want him to go off the mountain um, I could not drive our other truck the um, it, the homestead truck is a stick I can drive stick but it shifts hard and uh, we had some mold in that truck can't be around mold and I couldn't shift it because it shifts hard and my wrists and my hands still had some neuropathy struggles and it was just hard so I couldn't drive that truck so that meant that the mountain boy was driving our truck and the mountain man drove the homestead truck and I drove his truck down the mountain and he wanted me to go first and I disagreed. I, I tried to let him make the decisions, but I disagreed because if I broke down first, we'd all be stuck on the mountain. It's an, it, like I said, it's a narrow road. So we wouldn't have been able to get around him to, each other depending where I would break down. And I could coast, but even so. So I wanted to take the end. That way um, those two could get off the mountain and come back and get me if I broke down and I wouldn't hold things up because it was already like seven, eight o'clock. I was late. It was like seven o'clock at night till we got off the mountain. So anyway, um, you know, I was expecting it to just cut out on me. Actually going down the mountain, there's a lot of corners that are just really sharp. So I was very fearful that if it cut out on the mountain boy, he wouldn't be able to turn fast enough and would just shoot right off the mountain. And I mean, it's just straight drops. It's very far distances. It, it's, it's not good. And it, and it, the results wouldn't have been good. So we got about half to three quarters of the way down the mountain and I went to break and I didn't have anything. And thankfully they were far enough ahead of me. Uh, my other concern was that I would hit him, you know, bump into him at any at any time. Um, so I kept a safe distance so that if something did happen, I had, you know, plenty of room that I could break and break safely. So I was staying back at a decent pay, at a decent space there. And we went to go around a corner and I didn't have any breaks at all. Now, I know I'm a girl, but my dad always instilled a lot in my sister and I before we could drive. He wanted boys, so I needed to know how to change my tires, change my spark plugs, change the oil in my own vehicles, gap my spark plugs, jump the car if I needed to. So I, I'm pretty well versed and my first car was a Chevy Nova and it would give me troubles starting and stalling sometimes because the choke would get stuck so I'd have to take the air cleaner out and and play with the choke to get it to, to run. So. I know a little bit, but not a lot. But the other thing that I do know, so I've always been an aggressive driver. People that know me will admit to that. Um, I have a heavy foot uh, and I, I like to play. That's that, that's that adventurous side of me. Um, you know, when you see the movies where the car's like in an open space and just spinning around and flying, flying around, that's the kind of stuff I would love to be able to do. So. I grew up that way. I grew up messing around, you know, doing donuts in gravel parking lots and that kind of thing. So I, I know how to maneuver a vehicle and I also knew uh, just early on that if I were ever to lose my brakes, what are your options? And that's what I want to talk about today because many of you may not realize what your options are. Now uh, this is an automatic vehicle so I do have the emergency brake. And um, I tried that and thankfully that did work. Um, but had that not worked and being where we were, now thankfully this did not happen up further on the mountain, I would have been in some trouble. Uh, and I would have had to probably uh, do this second choice and I would have saddened me with his truck because it's new for him. Um, if you're in an option in a situation like that and you are in a place where you could tend to pick up speed and it would be dangerous for you and there's a mountainside next to you one of the things that you can do is run your vehicle into the side of the mountain and I'd like to say gracefully but it's just 
it's just one of those things. If you if you lose your brakes and you lose your emergency brake, your only other option is to either run it into like if you're on the highway, they do have those gravel pits and and um, places to to stop a vehicle because the 18 wheelers often have those problems going down some of these major mountain sides out here. But my options were either going off the mountainside on one side or running it into the mountain and, and trying to slow it down. So thankfully the emergency brake did work, but um, you know, had that happened to the mountain boy, because the first question I ask him is, would you have known, what would you have done? And he's like, I'm not really sure. You know, uh, we've discussed things with him. Uh, that was the first time he's ever been up on the mountain. And, you know, hindsight 2020, that's something that we should have covered with him that we didn't. Uh, so that's why I'm sharing this with you. Because if that happens to you and you're in a place like we live, you've got to make quick, quick decisions. Now, like I said, thankfully I was keeping a good distance and I didn't have to hit him. Uh, but I got down the mountain and um, kept feathering and messing with the emergency brake. Now the emergency brake on an automatic is one that you have to keep releasing. It's not like um, on a stick where you can easily do it. I think it's easier on a stick to be able to pull it up and release it. You know, I've got to be reaching down and also steering um, at the same time. So it was, it was, it was something. Um, I, I wasn't like super scared. I was just more concerned I was going to have to smash his truck to be able to stop it because my foot went to the floor. I had nothing. So thankfully the emergency brake still worked. Uh, when I was able to finally get to a spot where I could stop and that I had slowed enough that I could stop. And remember, I'm also got, I'm also with a full load of, of wood on the back of my truck. So I've got that weight pushing me. So I finally stopped. And um, when I got out, it just, it's, you know, it smelled like nothing but brakes. So something hung up and that's why I lost my brakes. We were able to get it home. Once I got down and was able to get situated there, we were on a touch and go spot that we weren't really on the mountain anymore. It was more little hills. So I was comfortable staying a distance and kept trying to get back. We were probably about two miles from the house when that happened, maybe a mile and a half. That's how close we were uh, when, when I was able to stop. So I did get it back to the house then, but I had to be towed because once that I settled in and stopped, I couldn't get it started again. It kept cutting out on me. So I would flash my headlights and keep trying to get her home and milk it home basically. And uh, we finally decided to uh, tow it. So Mountain Boy went ahead of us opened our gate to get into our homestead and the mountain man pulled pulled me home with the homestead truck so we had a loaded homestead truck and Austin's truck loaded the mountain boys truck loaded uh, and he was towing so it was quite an excursion it was quite a day it was a very long day um, and thankfully uh, nothing happened but please remember to go with your gut instincts because we so often get that gut instinct and that feeling you know, to either shy away from something or to be cautious and, and please heed warning to that because typically when, when we feel that, something does happen and that is God uh, giving you that little heads up and, and heeding the, you know, sharing the warning with you. So uh, I'm grateful that we, we have that and that we can feel that and we can sense that and we're open enough and, and smart enough to listen to it and, you know, against the mountain man's judgment. He did not want me driving that truck. He wanted to be driving that truck, but those were the options we had. And it's important for us ladies to know what to do. Uh, you know, it's important for everybody to know what to do. Just like I said with the mountain boy, you know, he needs to know that out here. He needs to know what to do. And we had talked about it before, but it wasn't something that he absorbed. And it's something that should be drilled into your children if you're living in an environment like this is what you need to do. The other thing you can do in a situation like that, um, with a manual, you could downshift into lower gears uh, to start bringing, you know, resisting the need for speed. Uh, with an automatic, you could too, but when you're moving at a clip like that, it's not always the best for the motor. So those, those are things to consider. Uh, running, running your truck into an area, you know, or your vehicle into an area that will slow it down, whether it's uh, 
muddy, sandy. Unfortunately, out here, uh, I did have the option of clay, but uh, the roads are so narrow and tight, you've got a tight bank there. So I just would have had to run it all the way along the mountain just trying to slow it down or hope that I'd hit a rock or a stump or something that would stop it. So, so it, we all survived, obviously, because we've been doing videos since. But those things happen, and you've got to be prepared for everything. Uh, when we are up on the mountain with our rigs, we have all kinds of stuff with us. We have first aid stuff. We have stuff to spend a night if we get stuck up there. You know, we have all of our tools, all of our gear, extra water, extra food. You know, we, we never are lacking anything. And those are the things you got to think about because out here it's so remote. You can't, you can't chance those things. You got to be really careful and take all these things into consideration. So with that being said, be careful out there. Thank you so much for joining us and listening in, and uh, we have some more really great videos coming your way. So stay tuned. Until the next video, God bless, guys.